imagine that you just met the world's most eligible and most spiritual bachelor. And then you're told that you have to be his matchmaker. What would you do? What steps would you take? Well, that's exactly the position in which Avram Avinu put his trusted servant Eliezer in this week's Parsha, Parsha's Chayesara. His son Yitzchak had reached marriageable age, and Eliezer was tasked to find him the one. And there were conditions too. Under no circumstances was Yitzchak to marry a Canaanite woman. Only someone related to Avram and his family would be suitable. So Eliezer traveled to Haran, where Avram's family lived. He knew that all the city's maidens came to the well in the evening time. So that's where he set up shop. Then he turned to God and he said, Avraham is the epitome of kindness and hospitality. Surely he would want those qualities in his future daughter-in-law. When the girls come out, I'll ask them for water. The one who offers a drink to both me and my camels, that must be the one destined for Yitzchak. We all know the story. Rivka, Avram's great niece, passed the test with flying colors. But there was a unique twist. The verse tells us that as soon as Eliezer watched Rivka begin to draw water, he actually raced towards her and then asked her the predetermined questions. Why did he do that? The Medrash tells us that as Rivka lowered her bucket, the waters in the well actually rose to greet her. Seeing this open miracle, Eliezer recognized that she must be a truly righteous woman. But here's my question. If such a miraculous event openly occurred, why did Eliezer even bother to continue with his pre-planned act? Didn't he already have his prize? And even more puzzling is that when Eliezer recounts the entire episode to Rivka's family, every single detail, he makes no mention of the incident with the rising waters, only about Rivka's grace and hospitality. Why is that? In the elite Slabotka yeshiva in Lithuania, nothing was important as the study of Torah. Students who excelled in their diligence were treated with the utmost and greatest respect. One day, Shmuel and Chaim were discussing a new arrival to the yeshiva named Isaac. Shmuel praised his genius. Isaac knows the entire Talmud and code of Jewish law by heart. But Chaim just said, I had a conversation with him the other day. He's truly a geschmake mensch, a pleasure to be with. Geschmake mensch, said Shmuel, is that all you could say about him? We're talking about the greatest mind to ever step foot in this yeshiva, and all you see is a decent and kind fellow? You obviously don't appreciate a person's true value. As Shmuel turned to walk away, he noticed that the Rosh Hashiva had overheard the conversation. The Rosh Hashiva said, Actually, Chaim is very right. Isaac's greatest quality is that he is a Gishmak mensch. Eventually, the Rosh Hashiva took Isaac as his own son-in-law, and he succeeded leadership of the yeshiva. Eliezer the Shatchin was surely most impressed by Rivka's divinity and spirituality. But miracles were not the criteria for becoming Yitzchak's wife. That required stellar character. For the wife of a patriarch and mother of the entire Jewish nation, Eliezer didn't look for Rivka, the miracle worker. He looked for and found Rivka, the truly Gishmak Mensch. And with this, he taught us all a profound and eternal lesson. In relationships, we don't look to be holy, we look to be human. Wishing you and yours a Shabbat Shalom Umar Barach.